Hey guys, Jordan here. I hope you're doing well and welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to be looking at Corsair's new M65 RGB Ultra gaming mouse. Corsair's M65 has been a very popular seller, so Corsair thought they'd bring it back. Now it keeps the familiar design and style, but Corsair have added a few features which makes it an even greater mouse. Plus you can also get a wireless version with Corsair Slipstream Tech, should you not be a fan of cables. So I'll cover some of the key features and then we'll get into the box. The M65 RGB Ultra is using the Markspin sensor that we saw in the Sabre RGB Pro Wireless, which gives up to a massive 26,000 dpi with 650 inches per second tracking with 50g of acceleration. There's also an on-the-fly adjustment to allow you to change in 50 dpi increments without having to go into IQ. Of course, I'll show you all that later on in the video. Of course, they have also implemented their 8000Hz polling, which we first saw on the Sabre RGB Pro. The primary mouse buttons use Corsair quick strike buttons with zero gaps for faster presses and the side buttons are using Omron switches which are rated up to 50 million clicks. It has an aluminum or aluminium frame with a tunable weight system giving you the flexibility to set the weight with an 18 gram range making the weight of the mouse from 97 to 115 grams. Okay so that's the main bulk of the mouse and I'll cover the other features as we go. So inside the box we'll find the mouse, warranty information, quick start guide as well as changeable weights. Of course, I'll show you those later on. So let's look at the M65 RGB Ultra. Corsair has retained the style of the M65 with just a few subtle changes. It looks most like the M65 Elite with the raw aluminium rather than the anodized look that we saw on the M65 Pro. Personally, for me, this is my favorite style of mouse that Corsair have launched. I really like the industrial design that it feels a little bit more rugged and just different from what we've seen recently from Corsair that's more closed in and more sleeker designs. So we'll have a little tour around the mouse and then we'll show you the software. On the left hand side we've got a nice texture design for grip and of course that famous DPI or sniper button. A lovely wine red colour. This will change your DPI to whatever you fancy allowing you to get nice precise control especially when you're doing some sniping. Now when pressed on the top the DPI indicator will show yellow but this can be changed in IQ if you fancy a different colour. The triangular texture grip on the left hand side continues on the right to give you some nice comfort and grip when you're gaming. There's a nice M65 accent on the left mouse button. Then to the right of that, we've got the DPI switch. Of course, you can change the different DPI settings on how sensitive it is and also the different colors in IQ. Now the on-the-fly DPI adjustment is really easy to do. Where you have your selectors, press and hold up and then use the forward button on the side of the mouse to go up 50 DPI or use the back to go down 50. Once you've chosen forward or back, it will show two flashes to indicate that that's done. And then you can also reset by pressing up and then holding forward and back to reset. I think it's really nice to have that small adjustment on the fly as I've found that some games just need a slight tune rather than jump into a different preset that's just too far apart. So flipping the M65 up is where it gets interesting. Of course we've got our marksman sensor and some PTFE pads for your mouse mat but here's where we're going to do our weight tuning. So you do have six options here you can use just the screw threads themselves or you can add the additional weights. Personally for me I started off with the back screw with the weight and then I ended up putting them all in just to see how it felt and I left it like that. Now I've not used the weight tuning system on a mouse for a long time and it really throws me back to my Logitech G500 days with a little weight caddy that that mouse had. Personally I really like the option to change the weight and of course where it's got the aluminium body it's going to be a little bit heavier than competitive gaming mice but for those that do like a heavy mouse then this is definitely one for you. Now we'll quickly touch on the cable for those of you that want to know about that. It's 1.8 meters in length and it's a very soft, supple kind of shoelace kind of material and definitely not the type of material that's going to get snagged on anything. So before we jump into IQ, we just want to touch upon two little niggles that I've got with this mouse. First of all, the left hand side where you rest your thumb or the wing kind of part isn't exactly flush to the rest of the mouse. So there is a little bit of a wobble that goes on, which I've found a little bit annoying. I'm not sure if that's a tolerance issue or maybe it's designed to be that way, but it does get on my nerves a little bit. And the second thing is the mouse buttons gathering grease. I've not been excessively sweating or anything like that, but it just gathers so quickly. It's quite a shame as I was really looking forward to this mouse, but that's just one thing that really lets it down. So niggles aside, now we've had a look around the mouse, let's jump into IQ and show you all the customizability that the M65 RGB Ultra has to offer. So on the left hand side, we've got all the different categories. Let's go through them all briefly. Here are all our different presets for different buttons. So for example, here we've got our forward button, but you can go in and change that. So you want to do something else. You can do a keystroke, long keys, mouse button, keyboard presses. You can do media controls and stuff, which I use volume quite regularly, which is quite nice. Let's go on to our sniper button. And here is where we're going to change our DPI by default. 
but you can obviously put something else on there if you want play on pause maybe might be quite nice for you all up to you you can go onto different modes and different views of the mouse as well so you can see it in a top down or a side on look now the hardware key assignments is when iq is not running so you can do exactly the same thing and then save it to the onboard storage so should you go to a friend's house you can keep all of the custom actions and stuff on there which is really quite nice it means you don't have to depend on iq to play your games which is nice and convenient now lighting effects you will see this in the conclusion i'll actually show you some different presets um, i've got a static white for me which is just what i fancy but you can just go in and put a different layer on there so you can do the scroll or the logo or you can do all which is both of those here are the presets um, by default let's just say we want a solid and we want to go for a blue this is just a static so it's going to stay like that but you can go and change it if you want maybe a watercolor or a rainbow color pulses go between two colors which is quite nice let's just set that up like that so it starts with a key press if you want or you can just do it when the profile starts and then if you want it to stop or not as i said you will see more of those in the conclusion if you want to see more of the rgb hardware lighting is the same thing but when iq is not running so nice you've got settings there so something that's very unique with m65 rgb ultra is the tilting that you can do if you will pick up the mouse and move it in different directions you can see the accelerometer that's built in is activating for the tilting really quite strange not going to be for everybody it's not something that i would use personally but you can set up custom actions if you want to so if you want to do you know left and right with the mouse you can do i'm not sure really how you'd implement it into games i personally want to use like was and d maybe so if you're maybe take your hand off the keyboard you can still move periodically um so it's i think it's going to be a bit more uh trial and error than anything but I am interested to see if that's something you'd use. So if you would use this, then let me know in a comment down below. DPI settings, these are the presets that are built in. Personally, I use stage three, which is 1150. Now I've set this to red because it looks really nice with the white contrast, but you can obviously change what color you want for each one. So if you want red for 800, you can do that. I think the red and white just really works well together. So that's what I've kept mine on. The sniper button here is where I said earlier, you can configure the color if you want so when you press that button down it will change just briefly while that button's held and you can see my mouse goes ultra slow then as well as the sniper is activated so it's nice you can uh, change all those values and that rgb that goes with it device calibration this is for just calibrating what mouse pad you're on very simple to do you can just grab this and then rotate and then it will calibrate to your mouse pad i'm using a corsair one so it's a perfect match there we go calibration done really easy now in the settings this is where we're going to activate the 8000 hertz polling by the default it comes with a thousand hertz just to make sure it's backwards compatible with multiple pcs but for reference i'm using a 10 year old pc and i can run 8k so you know you should be fine that will then reset once you do that and we go in and now we're on 8000 you can turn off the on the fly dpi adjustments here if you want to as well personally i just left them on because i can't see that you're going to do it accidentally button response optimization you can turn on and off and then the tutorial tool tips i'll turn that off obviously angle snapping personal preference again and then how sensitive you want your lift height to be for reference all the clips you're about to see are using different lighting effects to give you a nice idea of what you can expect to do in the iq software so I've never used an M65 before at this point, and it's always one that I wanted to use. After seeing the success that the previous M65s had, it did heighten my expectations for when this arrived at my doorstep. Now it's been a while since I've used a broader mouse like this. Generally speaking, the ones that we've looked at previously have all been more sleek and long, with a thinner body, unlike this one, which is quite the opposite. Personally for me, this is a really nice mouse. I've got big hands if you've seen any of my previous reviews and finding mice comfortable for my size of hand is a little bit hit and miss. I can use this with any grip style with no problems at all. And if you do have a small hand, then this will probably be even better for you. I mentioned the G500 from Logitech previously with the weight system, but another old school mouse, the Logitech G9 was another really wide mouse. And this has a very similar feel to that under the hand. It's a somewhat weird sensation using it is it just feels like a G9 but it's modern day with really quite extreme specs. So as I mentioned they've updated this with this sensor with a massive 26,000 DPI 
So that's really going to cater to everybody that uses the wackiest DPI settings. The on-the-fly adjustment is really handy. I've definitely used that more times than I can remember during games, so just to quickly adjust. As I mentioned, it's nice to have small micro adjustments, as for example, the presets on this mouse pretty much double the DPI rate for every different preset. So of course that can be too drastic in certain games. As you'd expect, the performance of the mouse is absolutely rapid. The on on switches on the side are a great step up from traditional, you know, bog standard switches, a lot faster. And along with the zero gap mouse one and mouse two, you get an ultra fast response, perfect for those fast paced FPS games. Of course, you do have the 8,000 Hertz polling rate should you wish to use that. I'm not a professional enough gamer to be able to tell the difference between say 2,000 and 8,000, but you might be able to, so that option is there should you need it. I love the design of the mouse. Time will tell if we'll see a white variant like we did with the previous generations, but the only niggles that I really have is the tolerance of that left wing and then just how quick grease builds up. It just seems to be that kind of material that just builds it up rather quickly and certainly faster than other mice. So the M65 RGB Ultra will be retailing at $89.99 in the UK, about $109 in the US. Now that is quite a jump considering you can get the standard M65 Pro on Amazon for about £45 now, but considering the Marksman sensor that's in this one, the 8000Hz polling rate, you've got the gestures should you wish to use those. So it's going to be up to you if you want to spend that extra bit of money on the additional features over the standard M65s. Firstly speaking, I think this is a great package from Corsair and certainly one that I'm happy to recommend, especially if you've got bigger hands like me. For those of you that are wondering between this and the wireless variant, I should be getting a wireless one soon, so make sure you get subscribed for my comparison video that will be coming soon. If there's anything else you want to know about this mouse, then do leave me a comment in the comments box below and I'll get back to you. I'll include an Amazon link if you fancy picking one of these up. Thank you all for watching, don't forget to subscribe and ding the bell if you enjoyed it. Thank you to Corsair for sending this out with me to review, and I'll see you all in the next one.